Scuba diving is an expensive hobby. Many of the divers that I know that started the sport young were actually bankrolled by their parents. The average 20 year old doesn't have three grand to throw at basic open water certification and a decent set of gear. Showed inflation moving up to 8.3% last month. Numbers that tanked the stock market and created a surreal. You haven't made a dent on the actual loan. Have yet. not made a dent, dent, dent on the principal. With prices on just about everything going absolutely nuts, diving is becoming more and more unattainable for the average Joe. But it doesn't have to be that way. Scuba diving, for most people, is a leisure activity. When times get tough, leisure activities are typically the first thing on the chopping block. I know I, for one, have not been spending nearly as much money as I normally do on dive gear. I can still remember driving to the dive shop on day one of my open water course. I was so excited, and I absolutely had the intention of pricing out a full set of gear on day one. I knew diving was for me. When I found out how much this stuff costs, I was pretty discouraged but I have this thing about giving up. Not for me. So after footing the bill for rental gear a few times, I decided to take the plunge and pick up a full set. I bought a full package of gear from Oceanic. BCD, regulator, alternate air source, dive computer, the whole nine yards, and I got it for $900, which seemed like a pretty good deal at the time. And looking at prices these days, it still seems like a pretty good deal. And I probably could have kept diving that set of gear for a long time. Then I ended up working at a dive shop that didn't sell Oceanic, so I traded up to a set of Aqualung and Apex gear. When you work at a dive shop, they really want you to dive the gear they're selling. And since I worked on commission, it only made sense. It's free advertisement. That being said, these days I personally wouldn't shop at a dive shop that pays their employees based off commission. Incentives are one thing, but when the employee needs to sell gear to survive, and the customer is going to suffer. Some people like working on commission. They make more money that way, but me personally, I hated it. I don't like it. I like to find the gear that's going to work for the person I'm helping without it being the most expensive thing in the shop. So hopefully I can help find what you need. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is something that salespeople have been saying since like the dawn of time. Buy nice or buy twice. I know all too well the sting of needing to rebuy something because what you bought originally isn't good enough for the type of diving you're doing. It's especially frustrating when you buy something that needs periodic maintenance, like a regulator, only to discover that you can't get it worked on anywhere nearby. So you end up needing to spring for shipping both ways to get it worked on every couple of years. Buying locally from a dive shop can help alleviate those costs. And it also supports the guys that fill your tanks because you can't fill tanks online. Most dive shops are going to try to steer you as far away as they can from buying used gear. But sometimes, buying used gear and having it serviced can save you a lot of money, especially when it's done right. It's important to buy the right stuff, because some regulators out there you can't buy parts kits for anymore, essentially making them useless because they can't be overhauled. I have so many horror stories about people bringing in gear they spent good money on, only to find out that the reg is unserviceable or has so many parts that need replacing, it's going to cost them like $400 to get it up and running again. So when I buy used stuff, I like to stick with the big brands like Aqualung and Scuba Pro. Scuba Pro especially because their used parts are so cheap. In fact, it's extremely cheap to convert a Scuba Pro regulator to DEN. So if you're looking for DEN regulators, buying a Scuba Pro in yoke and converting it to DIN is not all that expensive. That's not the case with some other manufacturers, so I highly recommend that you do your research. When in doubt, check with the service center that you plan on using before you make the purchase. Don't forget to pull back those hose protectors and look for corrosion. Hose protectors have a really nasty habit of holding salt water against the metal fittings on hoses. One of the best ways to get quality regulators at a steel is to wait for a good dive shop to sell off their rental gear. Dive shops tend to do this every so often to keep their rental gear fresh, and typically the gear is serviced, which can save you 100 to 200 bucks right off the bat. And usually they're selling it at a great discount. 
you can save a lot of money by working on your own gear. But as a repair technician, I don't really recommend that you work on your own regulators unless you really know what you're doing. I've been to a bunch of the repair seminars, but I didn't really get good at repairing regulators until I apprenticed under a far more experienced technician for an extended period of time and learned the ins and outs. Being a good technician takes experience and working on your own reg every couple of years doesn't count as experience. So regulators that advertise being user serviceable may not be the great deal that you're thinking they are. What I'm really talking about here are BCDs. Backplate and wing setups are great and they save you a ton of money because they're modular. When something breaks, you replace it. Typically, if you have like a jacket style BCD and you get a hole in the bladder, you try to patch it, but it's usually not super successful. And that basically means that the whole BCD is shot and you have to buy a new one. You puncture the bladder on a backplate and wing, you can likely replace the inner bladder or just replace the wing. Most of the professional divers that I've worked with ended up switching to backplate and wings eventually. Obviously, there are exceptions to that rule. Some of the OGs out there are super happy with their old school Scuba Pro Nighthawks and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. But I believe everybody can benefit from a backplate and wing, strictly from a customization standpoint. Really make the thing fit and work for your diving. If you really want to get the most for your money and you foresee yourself doing a whole lot of diving in the future, then you could consider becoming a dive professional. This is certainly not for everybody. If you don't love teaching and people, then this is not for you. The dive industry doesn't need any more lackluster instructors that have no intention of bettering themselves so that they can train the best divers possible. However, if this sounds like something that you would love, then you will be rewarded with extremely deep discounts on dive gear as an industry professional. Many mainland dive instructors have normal nine to five jobs and then teach periodically on the weekends. And in exchange for that, they are compensated meagerly and they are offered great discounts on dive gear. Like I said, this is not for everyone. If you clicked on this video, there's a decent chance that you're looking into tech diving. And if you're looking into tech diving, then you're likely staring down the barrel of a formidable required gear list. It seems crazy, right? Why would you need a new BCD or new regs? Why can't you use the ones you already own? You might be able to. You bought the right stuff, but probably not. Bolting that jacket style BCD that you bought after open water class to a set of doubles is not going to work out like you think it will. You need to talk to an instructor preferably the one that you plan on using. Shop around and find a really good instructor with a great reputation and a willingness to help you find what you need for the type of diving you want to do. If you're having trouble finding an instructor, check out my Patreon. I always make myself available to help my patrons figure out what kind of gear they need for the type of diving they're doing. It's good to build a relationship with your tech instructor, however, and I recommend you talk to them as well. Their experience with your local diving environment or the environment where you want to dive will be invaluable. You're going to pay a lot of money for your training and your diving. Why waste any time dealing with gear problems? If you talk to a knowledgeable pro, you can buy the right stuff and buy it once. If you still have questions, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll get to it as quick as I can. It's divers got to stick together. Huge thanks to all of my channel supporters on Patreon. They make these videos possible. Thank you guys so much. I would not be able to do this without you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the water.